So all of you know Sister Aruna very well, and uh, you know that she's a very uh, active blogger. You can go on the website. It's time, and uh, there are many uh, books she's written on it. They, uh, eight books. They all start with "It's time." It's time for change. It's time for relationships. And uh, she has this beautiful blend of the East and West culture because she's into knowledge for almost 40 years now. And what I uh, feel about her is like, though she was supposed to do a talk for us, for some reasons, we are not able to get her last time. She was all prepared for that. She wanted to do, but it's all the divine drama. So here we are, we have to have faith in the drama. So I asked her that, please, your talk is pending. So can we ask faith? She said, yeah, why not? So that's so she's always very approachable and always haji ka part, always says yes. So let me just uh, say a few words for her first before I go on to the poem on faith. That Sister Aruna is instrumental for serving the Middle East. And all of us know her talks for the soul are a beautiful feast. Listening to those motivates us to remove from within the beast. Implementing values in our lives is what we can do the least. Otherwise, it's like baking the bread without adding the yeast. So let me come to a few lines on faith. It's a beautiful virtue because I feel uh, when we did the spiritual revisions on Murlis, there were so many uh, Murlis is the spiritual versions which we have here in Brahma Kumaris. It was so many of them. So faith is indeed the foundation that doesn't ever freeze. It makes our bonding strong without any crease. It sets me free of any burden like I have released from the lees because I have found in life that faith works like golden keys. Mm, golden chabi in Hindi we say. Then in my dealings I don't have to keep staying please please. Weaknesses then depart and come to a cease. And every small opportunity for me is then to seize. And finally, my energy is thus conserved, not ready to squeeze at every small thing. So uh, with this, I would request thank you immensely once again. I think you're joining from Cairo. You can tell us all that where you're joining from. Over to you. <laughs> thank you so much, Manoj Bhai. Always a very gracious welcome. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. So yes, I'm in Cairo, we're renovating the center here and it's pretty hot <laughs> already. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, contemplate on faith. So faith, as we know, we often say that love can move mountains, but faith can also move mountains. And even as you say the word faith, um, there's such a, it's such a powerful word, even just to say it. It's, uh, it's like it conjures up, you know, image of, um, well, well, what are the synonyms of faith? It conjures up in, in images of can do, um, motivation, dedication, perseverance. Um, you believe, right? When you have faith, you believe. Faith can also be to depend on, to rely on, and also to recognize someone. You know, when you say that you have faith in them, you recognize. You recognize their skill set, their values. Faith in you could mean faith, like I confide in you, I trust in you. And so, you know, some time ago, there was a um, COP, um, a talk at a COP meeting, the COP uh, summit. And it was an interfaith dialogue in which they were actually talking about knowledge, faith, and soul, faith. So knowledge, faith is that which is fact-based, information-based, or as we might say, head-based. Whereas soul, faith, I think we can all agree that soul, faith is is really about using spiritual powers, being more loving, being more caring. And I'll come to caring uh, later and how we develop faith in 
whilst we care. Um, spiritual faith is about not having doubt. It's about assurance. It's about taking responsibility. So in essence, really, spiritual faith encompasses right many things. It's not just one word. When I say I have faith in you, I, I feel you're responsible, you're capable, uh, you can do it, you're powerful, you're strong. Right, just, see, just you think of when you use the word faith for others and, and what are the synonyms that go with that? What are the similar words that go with that? So that's why I'm saying it is a um, <laughs> very powerful topic. And I know that Mirabin took up a lot of aspects. So my challenge was to try and give you something different because the last talk covered a lot about faith in the self, faith in God, faith in time, faith in karma. So I've got a number of stories today to tell, to tell you, to share with you. And um, through that, hopefully we will all learn together uh, more about faith. So one of the most famous stories of India actually is the story of Mira. So Mira, they say, lived around uh, 1500s and uh, she's remembered as a mystic, as a poet and a very devout devotee of Lord Krishna. Now, the thing is that she got married against her will to a crown prince and then her husband died a few years later in battle. <clears throat> and a few years later, her father-in-law died and also her father died. And she was kind of left alone. And all her in-laws started to conspire against her. And they tried many ways of assassinating her, of killing her. But she still had this very strong love for Krishna. And so even though they would send a glass of poison or poison in some whatever milk, water, whatever, it wouldn't affect her. And even though they would send her a snake in a basket, but that snake would turn into a garland of flowers. So again, it wouldn't affect. So nothing harmed her because they say that because she was so in love with God that she had this protection of God, God's hand. So one is the faith, one is the belief that really he will protect and, and he really did. And the similar story is again from Bharat, from India of uh, the Pandavas and the Kauravs and the big Mahabharat war. So anyway, the whole Mahabharat is very big. <laughs> we won't get into that, but just the essence. The essence is that the Pandavas had only Krishna by their side. And Krishna also vowed not to pick up a, a weapon. He said, I will not kill anyone, but I will be there, I will guide you, and I will even drive your chariot, he said to Arjun, one of the Pandavas. And yet the Kauravs had a huge army and a lot of allegiances to the neighboring uh, kings, the kingdoms. But at the end, who wins? It is the Pandavas who have unbroken faith in their mission, in their victory, in Krishna. So, Lots of stories, as I said today. There's also another story in um, Catholicism, in, in the Catholic tradition. And this story is about, it's called the miracle of Lanciano. And this took place in the eighth century in the city of Lanciano in Italy. And apparently what happened is there was a monk who in this case, he didn't believe, he didn't believe that there was the presence of Christ. And he didn't believe that Christ actually said those words. Um, they call it the Eucharist, which is that holy communion, the gathering 
uh, also known as the Last Supper. So in this case, he didn't, well, he wanted to believe, but he couldn't believe, let's say, you know, sometimes we want to believe, but we can't. And so what happened is that when he found himself at a communion, then he started to share these words, the same words that uh, Christ had also mentioned. And the words were that the bread and the wine change into flesh and blood. And as he mentioned that, then literally the bread and the wine changed into flesh and blood. And actually the Catholic church actually claims that this was authentic. So it's again about, okay, I'm saying he didn't believe, but he wanted to believe and I guess he had to be shown. And so he was shown that, yes, this is true. Another story, another story is, again, many of the, the Indians maybe have heard of this and it is about the Pandit <laughs> who sits by the river and he tells everyone, oh, you know, you don't need a boat. You just say Rama's name. Rama, another name for God, and you just walk on water and you will get across. And so everybody has so much faith in this pundit, in this priest. And so they believe him and they go across easily, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> then one day what happens? There is a fire on his side. The forest it begins to roar with fire and people on the other side tell him well come just say the name Rama and you will come across <laughs> and he himself doesn't believe in this story he doesn't believe his own words and eventually he dies so those who believed they went across those who didn't <laughs> And then I'm sure you all know this story, but again, it's always very nice to be reminded. And the story is that there were these villagers who had decided to pray for rain. And so they decided to all come together and pray together. But what did the little boy do? The little boy brought an umbrella. <laughs> Because he, he felt that, yeah, I'm going to pray and it's going to rain and I'm going to need the umbrella. So how many of us live with this conviction that when we really believe it, it really works and, and God will provide? And I'm going to come to some of my personal stories. Okay, next story. Story is about a sculpture. Uh, a sculptor, a sculptor. So he actually did sculpting, but what happened is slowly in this village, this art started to die. And many of the sculptors, they moved and they told him also pack up your business and you know forget about it. But he kept doing the sculpting, sculpting. And then when his son was born, he started to teach him in his, in his spare time. And he actually told his son, he said, look, son, we may not have business at the moment, but you know what? One day somebody will recognize our work and then there will be no turning back, no looking back. And sure enough, he was the only sculptor left in town. So he was the only one who had these idols, right? These images, idols, everything he sculpted. And so what happened? One day a businessman came along and he saw his work and he said, oh my gosh, this is amazing. How did you do this? And he made a deal with the sculptor. He said, look, you make the work and I will sell it abroad. And they said, great, it's a deal. <laughs> And so again, his faith, his belief, and I think many of us have experienced this in our life where things don't work out, but we, we just have to have a bit of patience. Faith also means be patient, persevere, dedication. 
so that with time, your faith, because the faith needs time to kick in. It's a, like a cake that needs to bake. It's not just suddenly I have faith and then it happens tomorrow. No. You can say that somebody's mic is on. So you can say that faith needs brewing or faith needs baking or faith needs cooking. And I just have to have that powerful thought that it can happen, it will happen. And you know what, sure enough, it does. Okay, there's another story of uh, the Quran, the Holy Quran in which, and I often share this in my talks and it says that first tie your camel and then leave the rest to God. So what does this mean? This means that first I have to do the work. I can't just leave it to God and say, okay, God, I'm going to sit on my chair, on my couch, <laughs> and you're going to make it happen. No. Faith is not passive. Faith is active. People think faith is passive in that I just need to have faith. I just need to sit here with my, you know, my hands crossed and things will happen. No. I need to make them happen. So it's a bit like collaboration with God. When I engage, when I decide that this is what I want to do, then God also chips in. It's like God is saying, okay, for whatever one step you take, I will put in a hundred or a thousand. And so God does his bit. So you get going, you get inspired, you start it, and then God will help. And um, this reminds me of that story. I'm sure all of you have heard it, right? About, it's a bit of a different angle though. Um, but it's the story of this man who, he goes hiking in the, in the forest and uh, it starts to rain. So he decides he's just gonna stay in one place under some rocks. Next day, the rain stops, but it's quite foggy. It's foggy and what happens is he's walking and he doesn't realize that it's a cliff and he falls off the cliff. And as he falls off the cliff, he happens to hold on to some branch. So yeah, he shouts to God and he says, God, help me, help me. And what does God say? There's a voice from the ether and the voice says, okay, let go of the branch. And he says, no, no, how, how can I trust you? He said, well, if you don't let go, you'll never know. <laughs> he said, just let go of the branch. He said, no. So what happens is he's holding on to this branch and then a snake comes along. And the snake bites him. And then, of course, he has to let go. And he falls. He falls only three feet. The ground was only three feet from, from the branch. So now he starts to run. He sees the village and he starts to run. And luckily, the village people see him and he shows them their, um, he, he shows them his bite and they take him to hospital, he almost faints. And he says, oh my goodness, of God was telling me to let go of the branch because the snake was, was coming. But see, he said, despite me believing in him, he still saved my life. So what I wanna add to this story is, there's no point having faith after, right? When something happens, Having delayed faith, it doesn't work. There's no point. Okay, we might learn the lesson. We have learned the lesson so that next time we have pre-faith, not post-faith, right? Not faith after the event. That's not faith. Then the truth has been revealed. The drama has been revealed. The scenes have been revealed. The outcome has been revealed. Then that's not faith. You can't say, I knew, I knew, and that's why. No, we all knew, no? <laughs> so faith is always 
before the event. Faith is facing the unknown. Faith is facing those challenging situations and not knowing the outcome. Okay, so let's talk about outcomes. So here's another story. So here's a story of, again, a man who was out in the desert. And what happens is he had only one bottle of water and he's walking and he's lost now. As, as always, one gets lost in the desert. His water's running out. And then he sees um, what looks like a hut in the distance. So he begins to walk towards this hut. As he enters the hut, he notices that it's a bit run down, abandoned, you know, for a long time that nobody's there. But he's surprised to see that there's a hand water pump. So he has to just, you know, push the pump and all the water will come out. And it looks like all the connections are there, the pipeline is there, but at the moment when he starts pumping, there's no water. So then he starts searching around the hut to see if there's a switch or something, you know, something has to press. And there in the corner, he finds a bottle of water. And there's a note with this bottle of water. He wants to open the bottle, start drinking, but as he does, he reads the note. He reads this piece of paper and the piece of paper says that please use this water to start the pump. It works. After you have done that, then do not forget to refill the bottle again. And now, <laughs> I mean, what would you do? What would you do if you are in such a situation? You're dying of thirst. You're not sure if this is going to work. It's your last drop of water. Should he just throw this down into the pump? So again, a leap of faith. And he decides, okay, I'm going to trust these words. I'm going to trust the process. And he throws that water down into the pump. And lo and behold, the pump starts working. There's some bubbling sound and then he presses and there's such a relief on his face. But again, as I said, what would we do in such a situation? So again, just to finish the story, yeah, he, puts, he fills the bottle again with water. He puts it in the corner and again, he writes on it. Now with faith, you see, he writes on the note, it works <laughs> because now he's been proven. He says, have faith, it works. So this is my point also that, you know, many times our faith is tested. And when it's tested, we shouldn't think that it doesn't work. We shouldn't think that I mean, let's say opposite of faith is doubt. We shouldn't doubt. Because if we doubt, that's not faith. Actually, another question that often comes up when I give such talks is, is it full faith or is it a percentage of the faith? If you have 10% faith, is it faith? Or do you need to have full faith? <laughs> anyway, I leave you with that. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to come now to a bit of modern day um, publication. And uh, so many of you must have heard of Simon Sinek. And Simon writes in his book, it's in the chapter of Courage to Do the Right Thing. So Simon shares this story, okay? And then I'll tell you the moral. I'll tell you the story first. So Simon shares in, in this story that um, there was a plane that was going flying to Florida. So it's in the United States. And it had 126 people on it. Okay. And what happens is that there is fire in the cockpit. 
And of course, the pilot now starts to talk to the air traffic controller, the nearest air traffic controller. And he sends him a message and he says, I need to land the plane in an emergency. And of course, he has to because there's smoke, he may not see the dials, he may not be able to operate the plane. Now, the thing is that there is a, a, a rule about planes flying in the sky. And I didn't know this, but Simon explains that there cannot be a plane a uh, thousand meters above, thousand meters below, and in a radius of 500 miles. So each plane has to fly kind of, you know, a bit far apart. And uh, to make matters worse, what happened that day is the military were exercising their planes. And so there were additional two planes. So there's another plane, passenger plane, this plane that's, you know, uh, got smoke and two other planes. But what the air traffic controller did that day, because he was experienced, is he told this plane that, okay, descend, descend 5,000 meters. So he was actually breaking the law. And this pilot descended and then he informed all the other uh, people that were flying their planes, he told them, look, this is what's happening. There's another plane that's going to descend, that's going to be in your zone, right? And he was able to descend the plane easily, saving those um, 126 people. And so the moral of the story is we may know what's the right thing to do, but sometimes we also have to follow our intuition. And what Simon says, which is very interesting, is he says that we put people there in these positions so that we can trust the people. We cannot always trust technology. So one point I want to make is when we have faith, it's to do with people. You wouldn't say, I have faith in my computer. I have faith in my mobile. I have faith in my printer, right? You wouldn't use the word faith for, for those things. You would have faith referring to people. Why? Because we trust or we have faith that the person will do the right thing at the right time, even if it means breaking the law. Because People have a heart, people have a soul. The, the computer, the technology, the, the aeroplane dial, it doesn't have a heart. It will only do what it's programmed to do. So in, in this story, again, what we are saying is we have to actively trust others. In fact, we do, right? When we when we fly, we have to trust the pilot. We have to trust the plane. We have to trust the people that um, engineer the plane or, or, or have looked at all the, you know, the workings of the plane to make sure that it's, it can run. And we, we trust the air traffic controller that they will tell him to fly at the right time or to descend at the right time. So every step of the way, there is trust in everything we do. In fact, in Hindi, we say, no, umit pe tiki ne dunya, umit pe tiki <laughs> which means that the world runs on hope that yes, everything will go as we say, everything will go as per se, let's say. So this brings me actually onto the topic of, of God. As I said, we trust um, people, but we also more than people, we have faith in God. Because somewhere deep down inside, we know that God cares. We will only trust those people who we feel care for us. And so we know deep down that God cares for us. We, like, we, don't, we don't have faith in uh, Satan. We don't have faith in the devil. We don't have faith in Ravan. Right? But we have faith in God. We trust 
in God. And in fact, when we say, do you have faith? Often this refers to God. Right? It's synonymous. Do you have faith? Or do you have faith in God? They, they could mean the same thing. Because faith is often synonymous with, with God. And so again, so many stories. I'm sure all of you have um, personal experiences of when you have faith in God, then things just happen. And so I want to share a few of these stories. But before that, let me say that, you know, the spiritual realm is about connecting with God through faith. You cannot connect with God if there's no faith. In fact, faith in yourself, faith in yourself to know that you are much more than this body, that you're not limited to just this existence and, and this body, this costume, these, these uh, skill sets. You're much more than this. You're much more powerful. And that's why when we start to use the power of thought to try and uh, attract things in our life, we, we can make it happen. There's a saying, right? Where attention goes, energy flows. Where energy flows, life grows. So the more attention we give to something, then we're giving it energy. But we will not give energy unless we have faith in that. Unless we really believe that that can happen. So you have to believe. Eve, and especially those who are walking this spiritual path, I want to say you have to believe that you can become a better person. You have to believe that you can shed your weaknesses. You have to believe that you can become stronger. You first have to believe. It's the acceptance of that belief. And then the rest is just smooth sailing. But the first thing we don't do is we don't accept. We always think, no, this is about somebody else. Somebody else can be the Olympic winner or somebody else can, um, whatever, can win that race or competition or somebody else will get the promotion. But we don't believe that it can be me. And so this is where I would say faith is about self-respect. Have respect in yourself. Have respect in what you're doing. Have respect in your choices. The choices you make. If you don't make a choice, uh, whilst respecting it, then you're not respecting yourself. So this is faith in the self, is knowing that, okay, right now, this is what I need to do. This is what I can do. So yeah, I want to share a few stories now of the, of the founder of the Brahma Kumaris, Brahma Baba. And so back in the, you know, 50s and 60s, they went through a bit of a, a difficult patch where all his money had run out and um, they didn't have much means to run on. And so the senior sisters that we have, they shared with us many stories of that time and particularly stories of faith. So can you imagine there are about 250 to 300 people living in a campus and Nobody knows what there's going to be for breakfast because there's nothing, nothing in the kitchen. There's no vegetables, there's no rice, there's no flour. Everything has been used up. And in a way, it is this Brahma Baba who is responsible because everybody is relying on him <clears throat> to make the decisions. But he is, <laughs> he's so carefree. So the cook comes to him in the morning and says, okay, what shall we make? And he makes up a plan. He says, okay, we are going to go for a long walk. They're going to get extra exercise. And he takes all of them on a long walk through the forest. And what do they eat? They eat the berries from the tree. They eat the fruits that are growing there around them. And by the time they come back, there is a check that has come in the 11 o'clock post. And so Baba sends 
uh, the senior brother, Vishra Kishore Bau, and he says, okay, go cash this and bring some things from the market. And yet none of the, you know, youngsters, young adults, none of them knew that there was a problem. They just thought, okay, he's taking us on an outing. That is a leap of faith, isn't it? So there's another story like this. So the story is that um, there were these, there was these sisters having lunch. And at that time, of course, they all kind of ate in the same hall. In fact, there was no dining tables. They were just on, on the floor, sitting on the floor. And so what happened is uh, Baba is there, the senior sisters are there. And in the distance, Baba could see that the one serving the soup, the lentil, she was telling everyone, don't come again, huh? Don't come again. <laughs> in other words, you cannot have seconds, okay? You cannot have seconds today. And the thing is that the elderly women, they didn't have teeth. And because they didn't have teeth, they couldn't chew the chapati. And so they wanted more dal, the lentil. And so Baba understood this. And so Baba got up from his seat. He went to his room. And then what happened? Amazing. Amazing what happened. So he's in his room. He's meditating. And uh, he's in deep meditation. Okay. And then after some time, well, the sisters came with him, but after some time, they told him, you know, Papa, everybody's waiting to eat. So out of respect, they were waiting for him. And then Papa said, Baba is talking to God, that it's his job, it's his responsibility, and he has to provide. So again, like 200% faith that, you know, he has to do something. Then after some time, they go, they eat. And just within an hour, there is a, a bullet cart that is coming up the, the hill towards them. This is from the back gate. Some of you know the, the place. And so the sister who's on guard, she says, no, no, there's nothing here. Go back. And he still continues to move forward. And she says, there's nothing here. What have you come to draw? We, we haven't ordered anything. He said, no, no, I have to drop this off here. And uh, she says, what is it? And he says, it's lentil. And he had bags of lentil in his bullet cart. So the sister goes running to Baba and says, there's a man here to drop some lentil. And Baba says, okay, feed him some lunch and then I'll speak to him. So then after lunch, Baba asks him, what's the story? And he says, well, I don't know. I was taking this bullet cart to the market. I have to sell these lentils. But something told me from inside that I have to drop them here. And so here I am. These are all for you. And of course, everybody was stunned. That, you know, God, I mean, we will never know, right? But we believe that it's, God's intervention and he's inspired somebody to help them out. There's another story where again, Brahma Baba wanted to feed everyone jalebi. You know, jalebi is this round, round. There's a similar Arabic dish actually. It's like fried and then dipped in syrup. And, and there was no material to make jalebi. Jalebi is made on special occasions. And so Baba said in the morning, I will feed, feed everyone jalebi later at lunch. And everybody said, but there's nothing to make it with. And then sure enough, by 11, 12 o'clock, the ingredients come, they make the jalebi and everybody eats it. There's also, I want to share stories of Dadi Janki. Dadi Janki who lived to 104 and she was the head of the Brahmakumaris in, in recent years. And I had the fortune of living with her. And Dadi Janki 
I remember when we were building Global Cooperation House and they told us initially the project was about two million pounds and we didn't have the money. I don't even think we had a hundred thousand, but also everybody advised us knock down that building, build again. So when you do that, you have to really dig the earth, make the foundation, there's a lot more money, right? So there was more money needed than, than they thought. And so every time that he had to pay the check, somehow that money was in the bank account. And I saw this with my own eyes. I wasn't with Brahma Baba, I didn't live with him, but I lived with Daddy Janki and I was there working in the office. So I remember these scenes. There's just enough money to pay the check to the, to the construction company. I think it was like every three months we had to give them a check. And this is how Global Corporation House got built. And many of you have seen that. And, and then thereafter Diamond House. So I want to say that really when we trust, when we believe, it's a very positive energy. It's a positive state of mind. Just think when you don't believe, what is the state of mind when you don't believe? Then you're so negative. But just believe. So I want to come to Daddy's relationship with me, actually. She, she actually believed in me. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I could write. I didn't believe that I could travel, that I could speak in front of people. I, I didn't. Honestly, I was quite happy with a quiet life, comfortable life. But she kept encouraging, she kept pushing, she kept, you know, nudging, insisting. And uh, she would just tell you suddenly, okay, go there, okay, do this. In fact, I phoned her once when I was living in Istanbul. And uh, I just phoned, I used to phone her every now and then. And that day I said, well, you know, that is not much going on. I'm getting a bit bored. And she said to me, why don't you write? I said, write what? <laughs> she said, write articles, send them to magazines. I said, okay. And um, yeah, I thought about it. And then I did, I started. So she really planted that thought of, you know, I mean, I still don't think I'm a writer, but you know, I do it because I enjoy the journey, I enjoy expressing my ideas, and then you become a writer, you know? So many things like this, it's not that we aim to set out to do certain things, but just by believing, just by having faith, it happens. And this is where I want to come to karma. I know it's been spoken about, but I do believe that we have to, we have to trust our karma. And I had a kind of an epiphany this morning at um, epiphany uh, around early morning meditation today. And really, from my experience also, I realized that the only time that we are not fearful is when we have done good karma. If there's any negative karma that we have done, if we have given the slightest sorrow to anyone, then yes, there will be fear. But if I know that my heart is clean, my mind is clean, and I'm having the best thoughts I possibly can, then you can really have faith in your, in your karma. Then there's no need to fear. Fear comes because of guilt. But if there's no sin, there's no guilt. So have faith in your karma and at every step, you know, just try to do the best. Just, just try to choose the best. We can all be nicer people. We can all be kinder people. We can all be more loving. We can always be more extra of, of that than we are. 
And really, we know karma boomerangs back. So we will get back, right? Whatever we send out. So trust that God is on your side. Trust that God is looking after you. And so I end with the story. And then, yes, we can have the meditation. So I'm sure many of you have heard the story of the footprints. So the story of the footprints is that there was a person who was walking through his life. And um, what happened is when he died, he was shown the screen of his life. And he noticed that when he was going through the most difficult periods, that God had abandoned him. Because he only saw one set of footprints. So he felt he was walking alone and God had left him during those difficult times. But then when he, when he confronted God and he said, God, you left me during these times. And God said, no, it was during those times that I carried you. So really trust that God is looking after you. There's no conspiracy against you. You know, drama, drama means the life events, situation, nothing is there to get to you. Everybody's trying to help you have a good life. Everybody's trying to make you happier. Just trust in this process. And then you don't create enemies. You only create friends. So Om Shanti and uh, Manoj Bhai, I don't know, you want me to do a meditation or take questions? I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Actually, I don't think there are many questions because I'm amazed by your potential to tell us so many stories. Wow, that's really great. <laughs> and uh, I can't see any questions in the chat box. But I just wanted a question from, uh, I mean, uh, though we covered it in our Q&A, what is the difference you would say between faith and trust? Or it's almost the same thing? Yeah, I think it's almost the same thing. Um, okay. that, like I said, I think when we say faith, it, it's more uh, really with the heart and trust is with the head. Like you, we trust, it's like you need some facts and figures, you know? Mm -hmm. I trust, like I see your skill set and I trust that you can do it. But with faith, it's more intuition. It's not, you don't need the facts and figures or statistics. So this is where I see the slight difference. But yeah, I mean, they are used interchangeably, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, so I would just request uh, Sister Claudia to propose the vote of thanks. We don't have Dr. Ashok Mehta today for some reason. He's in Mount Abu actually still. So over to you, Claudia, sister. Yeah. Oh, Shanti. Good morning from here. Maybe you are good evening or good afternoon. But for in the name of everyone, I'm so glad that you are here with us today in Vancouver in the springtime when the cherry trees are all blowing and then setting you know, so many flowers are over. So I'm sending you some flowers of the cherry tree. I was thinking about to cut a little bit and show you, but I thought maybe the cherry tree would not like me to cut them, <laughs> but just feel the, the blowing of the, the leaves. I think, the... Uh, oh. I think you have them in your street, right? You have them in, in your, the cherry blossoms are growing in your street, right? Uh, no, but I was planning to do. <laughs> maybe that's what you see. This one here is not a cherry tree, no? Okay. Yeah. So, but the chair is the, the big tree, uh, and the, I have a big one in the front. So it's blowing because the, of the wind is blowing all the way to two or three houses that like I'm blowing to you as well. So okay. thank you for being with us today. Thank and you. it was a pleasure to hear you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I miss Vancouver. <laughs> Especially now, summertime. Yeah. yeah, I know. I was thinking you have many places you like, it, but I, I know Vancouver is also special in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank
Thank you, Claudia, Thank sister. And for people who don't know, uh, Aruna's sister was also instrumental in starting the services in Vancouver. So there you are. You are back to your uh, abode where you started the service. Okay. So I and just quickly share. I was uh, very young at that time. Okay. <laughs> Right. So I'll just quickly share the screen and uh, do the announcements and then we'll go in the meditation on faith uh, with Sister Aruna. Uh, so as all of you, the byproduct of faith is, what is the sign if you're having a faithful intellect? Everyone touches on that. It's carefreeness. So our next talk will be on carefreeness, rather being carefree. So I'll take up that first. We had uh, another speaker before, but it's all the divine drama. I have full faith in that. So people keep coming and going for because of some reasons. So we always have a speaker, a senior speaker. So this time is the first time we have Sister Maureen. Uh, all of you know that she's also she also calls herself Morni because that's the name Dadi Janki I think gave her. Well, she'll tell us when we meet her on next Sunday. And she'll be joining from Australia. She's the coordinator there for the Yara Valley Living Center. And followed by that, we have the <coughs> workshop as usual. It will be Sister Wadi this time joining from Miami. And as all of you know that uh, we are doing these powers as well. This is the third power now. Power to tolerate. And uh, very coincidentally, the Navratras are going on. You know, Navratras is uh, celebrated twice in a year in India. So first, all of you all know the October and also in the spring, summer time, it is being celebrated. So today actually is what we call the Ashtami, the eighth day. And tomorrow is the ninth day, the Navratra. And incidentally, it's in, uh, Ram Naomi also. Well, anyway, I'll not tell you the details. I'll spare you those details. But uh, the power to tolerate, we are doing it on the Navratra day itself. Again, a beautiful coincidence, I must say. We never plan this. It just happens. So thanks to the divine plan. And uh, uh, this is our elegant calendar, which all of you can look at it. We, key, we email it to you during uh, the email sessions, which we send you all. And also we'll be sent, all of you have requested for the PowerPoints. So we'll be uh, sending also a summary of Sister Aruna's talk, all the stories, beautiful stories. And we'll be sending in the form of what we call a review material to your emails. So people who really want the PPT or the PDF copy, please just email in the chat box your email so that we can send it to you again. And these are our um, addresses and uh, all these workshops are recorded on these uh, on this uh, website omshanti.tk forward slash workshops. So I'll just stop sharing and uh, over to uh, Sister Aruna for the closing meditation. Yeah. Shall I play some soft music in the background? Yeah, sure. It doesn't look like that. So yeah, just sit comfortably, everyone. Try not to cross your legs and just keep yourself open. And just settle down into your seat. And I'm gonna take these few moments for myself to really just reinforce my faith. So let us start with the self. Firstly, I start with self love. I love myself for just who I am. my strengths and my weaknesses. I don't try to be like somebody else. I don't compare. I just focus on myself. So in your mind's eye, just take a good look at yourself. So 
take a look at the quality of your thoughts. Take a look at the feelings in your heart. And take a look at your divine actions. And all of this three, mind, mind, word, and action, creates I, the personality. So I choose to create the best thoughts, positive thoughts, powerful thoughts. I choose to only speak sweet words. Just say this to yourself. Just repeat after me quietly. And I choose to have powerful thoughts, sweet words, and divine actions, uplifting actions. And then I can have faith in myself. So just visualize in your mind's eye this very positive, powerful being that is now you spreading this light. Wherever you go, you are spreading the light. And when people see your light, they will begin to have faith in you. In your, in your life, in your drama. Have faith in the orbit of your life, which means all those that are around you. Everyone is placed perfectly in your life. The script perfect and I'm learning and I'm growing and expanding I'm becoming stronger I see my growth, I see my evolution, I have faith in my drama. And now we turn to the one above. We have faith in him, in her, faith in God, in Allah. And I can feel that shower of light, of protection.
Just visualize this fountain of light falling on you. And I have absolute faith that God is by my side. Guiding me. Nurturing me. Stay in this peace and calm. Fill yourself with this peace and calm. All means I am, and Shanti means at peace. I am at peace. Thank you so much, Sister Aruna, and uh, thank you for this. And we'll just take a quick photograph. If all of you all want to have a memorable picture with Sister Aruna, you'll have to open your video cameras, make it on. For the photo, all of you, you all do that. Otherwise, you're all silent. <laughs> okay, Anu, Sister, over to you. Yeah. We can't hear you. Yeah, okay, now it's... Okay, so whoever wants to be in the picture, please switch on your video. And if you have any discomfort, hesitation, please don't switch on your video. We just wanted to mention that. So if you're switching on your video, you are willing to be in the picture. So I can see mostly everyone. So thank you. Let me take it. One more, the second page. Thank you. And we have a third page. I got the picture. Thank you, Sister Aruna. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manoj Bhai. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Baba.